This is Radio Health Journal. I'm Nancy Benson. This week, needle phobia. I knew that if she reached up to pull that cord to indicate we're getting off the bus, I was going to get a shot and I would go berserk. One reason so many people avoid the doctor when Radio Health Journal returns. I'm Reed Pence, the producer and host of Radio Health Journal. If you like listening to Radio Health Journal, you'll also like our sister show, Viewpoints, which covers a wide array of topics from education to history to the environment. Here's a preview of what they're covering this week on Viewpoints. I've made more friends through Peloton than any other, I'll call it, institution in my adult life. The appeal of at-home fitness. Then... There is no universal single time for anyone to know. What time it is, is going to depend on everybody's individual location and personal history, how they've been moving around. The intricacies of time. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth this week on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. Listen to Radio Health Journal and Viewpoints on your favorite radio station. And subscribe and listen anytime on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Radio Health Journal. Sixty-year-old Laura Munoz of Palestine, Texas, hasn't liked going to the doctor as long as she can remember. I've never liked needles, and doctors or nurses gave them to me. I mean, I can remember at seven fighting the doctor because I needed a tetanus shot. And I had a big fight, and I got the tetanus shot. That's not unusual. Most children are afraid of needles, and that's a problem in the age of COVID-19, when shots are as important as they are now for everyone. But for a lot of people, the fear doesn't go away when they grow up. Laura's one of them. She says on a scale of 1 to 10, her needle phobia is about an 8. I had some surgery as an adult, and I had some tubes into for drainage for my abdomen, and one of the tubes fell out. And anyways, the fluid built up in my abdomen, and the doctor said, well, I'm going to have to stick this long needle in to remove that fluid, and then we're going to have to reinsert the drain. And, oh, I said, oh, do you have to? And it didn't hurt, but it was awful. It really was, and the needle was really long. They start squirming around in the chair and such, or they'll just ask the question. Many of them, or probably most of the adults, don't acknowledge it, but you can see by their body language, the look in their eyes, or just the way they position themselves, that they have this underlying fear of that. And they'll ask, are there any other alternatives? That's Dr. Gary Leroy, a family physician in Dayton, Ohio, and former president of the American Academy of Family Physicians. He's very familiar with needle phobia, both in his patients and himself, and how it often starts with a bad experience in childhood. I used to love getting on a bus with my mom and going downtown because we'd get to shop and eat at restaurants. But I knew that if she reached up to pull that cord to indicate we're getting off the bus in front of that red brick building, that I was going to get a shot and I would go berserk. And then my mother would practically have to drag me or carry me to the basement of the city hall building to get my vaccines. And that innate fear of needles just stayed with me. And so, yes, I looked the other way. Leroy says that's what a lot of people do when facing an injection. Swallow hard and look the other way. You may be surprised who Leroy says squirms the most. The bigger they are, the worse they are for the most part. Men tend to, at least in my practice, the big burly men tend to be most fearful, although they may not acknowledge it, but they're the more fearful of individuals with kind of needle phobias. While you may hear about people who have to be held down to get a shot, Leroy says that seldom happens, at least with adults. Those who are that badly needle-phobic usually just get up and walk out instead. Even if you could give a vaccine with a needle and there was 99% assurance to the individual receiving it that it would not hurt, about 10% of adults still would not take that vaccine. But when you're a child, probably about two-thirds of children into their adolescence have this needle phobia when it lessens to about a third of adults. But still, there are individuals that no matter what, just the looking at a needle, some people can have these near faint or faint episodes uh, just from, you know, somebody pulling out a needle. 
People can faint. Some are so fearful that it can result in seizure activity. So it's not a benign thing for some individuals. Leroy says for a few people, the power of needle phobia seems so visceral that it fuels an opposition to vaccines overall. And it's one reason some people oppose COVID vaccines. However, we may never really know how many people have needle phobia. Those who have it most severely simply avoid the doctor without ever saying why and often suffer health consequences. But even those who are merely uncomfortable getting an injection may pay a health price. Leroy is most concerned about people with diabetes. Laura Munoz, for example, she was okay as long as her doctor could treat her diabetes with oral medication. But then those drugs stopped working. She needed to switch to insulin injections. So if someone else, if a doctor or a nurse were to give me a shot, if I look away and don't watch them do it, I'm okay with that. But with me trying to do it to myself, give it to myself, I can't. And I tried for three months to give the shot to myself. They're not painful or anything. Or most of the time they weren't painful, but I just could not do it. And I was going to my neighbors and my friends and my boyfriend saying, you know, hey, can you give me this shot because I can't do it. And I would always try myself because I don't think it's their responsibility to give me a shot. I think it's my responsibility. Fortunately, Munoz's boyfriend says he'll help with injections as long as she needs them. But not everybody has a helpful significant other. Leroy says sometimes it takes a doctor doing some homework to find alternatives to injections. Things like jet injections and transdermal patches. Needle phobia websites say many people complain that doctors are often less than sympathetic, as if somebody can just get over it. Leroy knows that's not true because he has diabetes too and had to work at treating it. He kept telling himself that injections beat taking lots of pills, but he says if doctors and parents were better about how they talk to their kids about injections, needle phobia might never take hold in the first place. Parents should not lie to the children and tell them that it won't hurt. They need to be truthful about what is happening and that they love them and this is not a form of punishment for them. I mean, some of your listeners, I'm sure, have been in the doctor's offices and heard children screaming and crying because they got their vaccinations. And so behind that door, sometimes there are siblings watching this. And then they're like freaking out themselves because they're like, oh my gosh, well, obviously Johnny's having a fit. So boy, I sure don't want to have one of those things. So again, it's trying to put things in perspective. So if a child asks if it'll hurt, say yes, but only for a second. Explain why it's necessary. Then once they get through it successfully, maybe it's time for a treat. Not bad advice, even for an adult who's uncomfortable getting a shot. You can find out more about all our guests through our website, radiohealthjournal.org. Our production manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Nancy Benson. Coming up next week on Radio Health Journal. That does not mean that we raise our hands and we give up and we say, oh, well, it's too late. The temperatures are rising because these damages are not sort of going off of a cliff. Climate change and life as we know it. Do rising temperatures mean there's no hope? Then the unavoidable vegan diet of the future. You can be a vegan and still have a very unhealthy lifestyle if you really want to. I mean, vodka is vegan, you know, potato chips are vegan. All that and more on Radio Health Journal. And that's Radio Health Journal for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more. And check Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify for a library of past programs. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and information about our guests at RadioHealthJournal.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Radio Health Journal.